Okay, here we're going to investigate the topic of photoperiodism. And what this is is the impact that day length can have on the flowering of plants. We have certain plants that are called short day plants and certain ones called long day plants. We're going to investigate what causes plants to flower and when. Well, first off, the purpose of flowering, just in the general sense, is the goal is to allow the plants to reproduce. This needs to happen in sync with pollinators. Plants want to be um, in sync with their pollinators because if they're not, then this bee is not going to be able to transfer the pollen and that individual will not be able to survive. Poinsettia plants and chrysanthemums are short day plants, with poinsettias requiring even longer nights, or when think about it, shorter days, to flower. This is why typically we see these grown and produce their vibrant colors uh, in the winter time. L lilies, for example, are long day plants and they flower in the spring as nights shorten and the days lengthen. Let's investigate these short and long day plants a little bit more. So the first part is, well, if plants are being able to perceive this long and short days, well, how do they tell time? Well, they have two different ways. Phytochromes are leaf pigments that enable plants to sense light and dark periods. This helps the plant determine the photoperiodism, which is plant's response to the length of light and darkness. Now, the phytochrome system is a biologically inactive form of the phytochrome, or PR. It's converted to a biologically active form called PFR, as we see here, under illumination with red light. Far red light and darkness convert this molecule back to the inactive form. So what does this mean? Well, first off, far red light is referring to light that's kind of beyond the 700 nanometers. We're kind of getting out of the area where we can see in normal visible light. It had a little bit of lower of energy, too. So this active form in periods of darkness will transfer over into the PR, which is the inactive form. Now, we can use far red light to help um, make that process go quicker, or we can use red light to help um, create an inactive to an active form very quickly these change is initiating this cellular response. So let's look at this again here, our phytochromes in particular. They have both the active and inactive form. Remember, the inactive form is the PR, and it's converted into the active form when it absorbs red light. We see here, here's our inactive PR form, absorbing red light, particularly in the 660 nanometers, converted to PFR. The active form of the phytochrome, the PFR, is broken down into the inactive form when it absorbs red light, we see here, for a quick conversion. Or the active form can gradually revert back to the inactive form in the absence of light or that darkness period. So this transfer that occurs here, this slow reversion back to the inactive, is how plants can help tell the length of night that occurs. This is, how, again, how they tell time. We can trick them with different lights, but naturally when the sun sets, our active PFRs are slowly going to convert to PRs, the inactive form. The plant will simply measure this and be able to tell how long it's been night. So one key important factor to all of this is that plants um, class as short or long day plants. However, the critical factor in determining their activity is night length. So while we kind of use the term short day and long day, Plants can only determine the length of time of continuous darkness. This is how they're telling time. And this is an important aspect because this can help influence or impact um, plants' abilities to sense the length of the, quote, day. Really, they're only able to determine the length of night. So a way to think about this is as soon as the sun sets, plants start a stopwatch. And as soon as they see light, as soon as the sun rises, they stop that stopwatch. And they look at that amount, and they're able to then tell whether it's a short day or a long day. But they're only able to tell the length of continuous darkness. So let's put this in a graphical form. Might be a little bit easier to understand here. So we're looking at our short day plants. They flower when days are short. The way to think about this is if days are short, well, the night period is longer than what we call the critical length. So here's our short day plant. We see that the night was short, okay, meaning a long day. Plants do not flower. The short day plants, the PFR inhibits flowering, and hence flowering requires low levels of PFR, resulting in long nights. Here's our critical length, and here's our long night now. That long night equates to a short day, and the plant will flower. Because the night time, or the length of night, the length of continuous darkness, was greater than the critical length. Where it gets a little confusing here 
is where we have a long night, but in the middle, for whatever reason, we have a flash of light. And we notice the plant doesn't flower during this time. This is because plants need a long night of uninterrupted night light. As I said, remember, plants have that stopwatch. They see darkness, they start the stopwatch. Oh, light comes in, they stop that stopwatch, and they look at the time. Oh, it's less than the critical length, and they restart again, and they count again. Oh, and they look at it again, they stop it. Nope, not long enough, and they won't flower. It's not a summation in total. They need to have continuous hours of darkness. And we see that evident here, that continuous hours of darkness is greater than the critical light, they'll flower. Here we have that little burst of light, and that's causing them not to flower, because each of these parts is less than the critical length. So in this case, they don't flower. Short day plants really mean long night plants. These short day plants um, require periods of darkness to be greater than the uninterrupted critical period. These plants traditionally will not flower during the summer months when night lengths are short. Horticulturists though can trigger flowering in these plants by covering the plants with an opaque black cloth for about 12 hours. Chrysanthemums are an example of this. Everyone wants them to bloom at the right time. So what a botanist can do is simply block out the light, causing the night to be longer in this case, um, and causing them to flower. This is in comparison to our long day plants. You can see again that comparison between the two. I'm going to discuss these now and hopefully provide a little bit of an example between the two. So our long day plants, they flower when days are long, or they require a night period to be less than the critical length. So we see that here. Night length is shorter than the critical period, boom, they flower. Here's our night length longer than the critical period, they don't flower. But what's interesting here is we have that burst of light again, and what this has created now is sections of continuous darkness to be less than the critical night length, and those plants will actually flower during that time. So long day plants, the PFR activates flowering, and hence flowering requires high levels of PFR, and this results in the short nights. And again, here we have a long night, we have that burst of light in the middle, and that can cause the plants to flower. Kind of putting it together, hopefully this uh, picture here makes a little bit more sense. Those long days, re long day plants require periods of darkness to be less than the uninterrupted critical length. These plants will traditionally not flower during the winter and autumn months when night lengths are long. For colors can trigger flowering in these plants by exposing the plant to a light source during the night. So we see that right here. We're exposing those plants, exposing those plants to uh, bright light in the middle of the night, breaking apart that continuous hours of darkness, causing them to flower. Carnations are an example of a long day plant. So again, even though they're listed as long day and short day plants, we want to keep in mind that plants can only tell the hours of continuous darkness, and that's how they're determining whether they flower or not. Short day plants will flower during periods of long night. Long day plants will flower during periods of a short night. We can influence that with a burst of light. Here we're breaking that cycle in the short day plant. And here we're breaking that hours of continuous darkness here with a burst of light, causing long day plants to flower and suppressing flowering in short day plants. Lastly, we, there's some things called day neutral plants. And these plants will flower independently of a photo period, but they may require a period of cold in some instances. Rice is a prime example of what's called a day neutral plant. It'll flower regardless of a lengthening day, a shortening day, a burst of light or not. It is a prime example of a day neutral plant.